Well, I guess a good question is what what is often the cause of the false alarms once you get once you get over and assess the situation and determine that it's not a fire? What are some of the uh, a lot of the causes of the false alarms that we're running to now um, have to do with cooking smoke okay. or fires, where things uh, cooking is left unattended, mm -hmm. uh, somebody falls asleep um, when they're cooking something and it burns. Um, sometimes it's just the fact that we're cooking in areas where there are smoke detectors. Um, that's basically right now, we, we used to run to a lot of uh, malicious false alarms, but that's not so much the case anymore. And in malicious, it means someone pulling the alarm. Pulling, pulling alarms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> that's improved a lot. A lot. Yeah. And what, what's improved to that? What do you think caused caused that to improve? Well, I think the 24-hour security that they have now, that they didn't yeah. have in the past. And maybe just a change of attitude, too. You know. And I think the policy that they charge, the city charges for false alarm, and that charge is passed on to the students on the floor, I believe, uh, that that has to be paid before they get their graduation credentials and things like that. And I think uh, the, the students help police themselves. Yeah. Now, what's the fine for that? And what do they get charged for that? The uh, fine from the city is you're allowed uh, one false alarm a year, and after that, it's $150 a call. Now that's if it's if it's uh, basically a malicious alarm. Yeah. Uh, if, it's, if it's cooking smoke or if the alarm system is doing what it's supposed to do, yeah. they're not fined for that.